So today I'm going to talk about Zombie Lake from 1981. It's a, uh, a Nazi zombie movie. Uh, <laughs> that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, but it's not. So Hitch, what did you think of the movie? Be honest. Fascinating. Alright, so let's get into it. Zombie Lake <clears throat> starts out pretty good. Less than one minute in and we are already treated to some senseless nudity. An attractive woman takes off all her clothes, does some light stretches, and then uh, lays out in the sun for a bit, and then proceeds to skinny dip in a nearby lake. The woman does make one questionable move other than swimming in a lake the others have named the Lake of Ghosts and the Lake of the Damned. She sees this sign and just decides to toss it to the side and ignore its obvious warnings of death. You gotta ask yourself, what could possibly go wrong in this situation? I don't know about you, but if I saw that sign, I'm not gonna go swimming in the lake. And I, I'm not even a good swimmer anyway, so. Even if I said, hey, please swim, I, I still wouldn't play swim in the lake. We all know that bad things live at the bottom of strange lakes. Jason Voorhees, zombie beavers, alligators, and that thing from Creepshow Part 2, like the raft session. You know what I'm talking about. As the woman swims in the lake, we get our first glimpse of a zombie as one grabs her and possibly kills her. And just ignore Hitch. He's being a butthole today. And these zombies are pretty disappointing looking, I gotta say. I never thought I'd see the day that a zombie looked worse than one from Dawn of the Dead. I know that Dawn of the Dead is a classic and allegedly the greatest zombie movie ever made. But let's be real here. The zombies, they look like doo-doo in that movie. The zombies in Zombie Lake are just people with loosely applied green paint that doesn't appear to be waterproof. Which is unfortunate because the zombies spend most of their time in the water. And let me add, all the underwater scenes are clearly filmed in a pool somewhere. This is on location at an actual lake. This is in a pool. Come on guys, you're not fooling anyone here. Some locals at a tavern are discussing the whereabouts of the woman that was at the lake earlier. A man with a fantastic mustache states that if the woman doesn't turn up soon, he's gonna go tell the mayor in the morning. It then cuts to the mayor's place. And if you look really close, or, e or even not so close, you can see a crew member's head in a mirror in the background. I love that kind of stuff. And I, I guess it must be the next day too, because the man with the fantastic mustache comes in and tells the mayor he went down to the lake and uh, couldn't find the woman anywhere, but did find her clothes. This scene kind of demonstrates one of the biggest problems with this movie is that it doesn't show the passage of time in any way. I'm pretty sure some of these scenes were going to be filmed day for night, which would have helped, but they didn't do it. So now, this movie just kind of seems like one big long day, which I'm going to assume it's not supposed to be that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's not. That same day, or the next, I don't know, and it doesn't really matter, a zombie emerges from the water as a woman does something by the lake. I 
I would like to point out how uh, wet the zombie is as he emerges from the water. And now a almost completely dry zombie attacks that woman and um, gums her to death. As the zombie a attacks, the camera really lingers on the action here. And any, and any real lack of special effects or makeup is really put on full display. Evidently, the zombie has been going the to town on this woman's neck. And you can clearly see there is no damage of any kind being done. Just a lot of blood that's kind of gets smeared around and a lot of slobber. Some locals find the woman and then parade her through the town. In the process, they are fully exposing this woman to everyone as they parade her through the town and then they drop her on the ground in front of what must be the mayor's office. There you go. That's better. Show the mayor some respect, dead woman. So the mayor comes out and says to take the body to the morgue for an autopsy. Do you think that's really necessary at this point? I think the cause of death would have something to do with that huge gaping wound in her neck. But I'm not a doctor, so I can't truly speak to that. I suppose it's possible she did have a heart attack. But I would like to add, I am a nurse, so I am a medical professional. The mayor then asks one of the men to come inside and it's revealed that that dead woman is his daughter. Listen, Gazi, I know how you feel about your poor daughter. Yeah, I know. So let me get this straight. That man just paraded his dead daughter's body throughout the entire village, exposing her to everyone along the way. I gotta say, that's pretty shitty. Furthermore, Let's look at the face of a grieving father. He seems to be handling the situation quite well. You can sense that he's, he's really holding back the emotions. Or he's just waiting for the director to see action. Sometime later, the mayor meets up with these two little boys and asks them what they saw last night. And you know what? That really shouldn't matter because up to this point, Nothing's happened at night. A reporter shows up at the village and goes into the tavern. She tells everyone that she wants to do a story on the village's weird little lake. Mr. Mustache takes the reporter to the mayor's house. He says that the mayor would be the best person to talk to about the lake. I'll take my gear. All right, let's go. Let's make... And just check out the mayor's house. He lives in the castle. The perks of being a mayor. So the reporter goes in, then all of a sudden the film goes dark and grainy. And then normal again. I'm a reporter. I was told to walk in. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Can't talk to you today. Come back tomorrow. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't. I'm in a hurry. Uh, Mr. Ch and also, how do you like this focus? It's pretty crisp, right? And uh, check out that light stand being reflected in the mirror, too. Strange tales about the lake. And if things weren't bad enough for this scene, you can clearly see the cameraman in another mirror. The reporter tells the mayor that she wants to do a story on the village's lake, and the mayor agrees to talk to her about it. Now we get a flashback as the mayor tells her the story of the lake. Nazi soldiers are in the village fighting off an invisible army. We hear airplane sounds, explosions, gunshots, but we don't get to see where they're actually coming from. One of the Nazis sees a woman in danger and then rushes to protect her. As we all know, Nazis have a rich history of doing good deeds for others. They're really good guys. Nazis. That's sarcasm. They're not good guys. They're bad.
He saves the woman's life, maybe, and then collapses to the ground. I don't know why he collapses to the ground, because nothing really happened to him, but in his defense, he is now bleeding from his head. Some Nazi soldiers come carry him away, and the woman follows after them. It's at this point that it kind of dawns on me, there's no dialogue going on here. No one's saying a word. All the dialogue seems to have been replaced with a whole lot of awkward staring. Which pretty much continues throughout the entirety of the movie. The woman stares at the wounded zombie from a distance. And he's possibly staring back at her too. But it really just looks like he has a uh, dull blank expression on his face. Like he's in shock or something and staring at a wall. But I may be giving him too much credit. To be honest, I don't think he knows he's not supposed to be a zombie at this point. 